act out the word of God. Isn't that, yes, isn't that great? Amen. Because I can tell you one thing, they won't forget it when they're older. They'll remember being in this. Even even little Claire is going to remember running running around the church here and following her cousins and her friends. It's an awesome thing. And I just I'm not going to share a lot, but I do want to just share a couple scriptures here before we have that communion. Amen. See, I wanted to be in the play and have Hector's part of eating the chocolate bunny, but he grabbed it and I, I didn't get it. So beat me in the audition. It's caramel filled, huh? Oh, and it's caramel filled. Oh, oh my goodness. He may need security to get out of the yeah. building. Okay. Let's just pray to receive the word. We're going to receive communion. Just pray with me. Say, Father God, I thank you for Resurrection Sunday, for what it means in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And, uh, you know, I, this morning as, as we celebrate and remember that empty tomb in Jesus alive from the dead, to really understand what happened Easter Sunday morning, you have to also include what took place on Good Friday. Amen. And uh, it says in Mark 15, 33, it says that uh, noon darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. I want you to think about this for just a minute. Here's Jesus hanging on the cross, and all of a sudden, they say it may have been an eclipse. I don't know what it was. Uh, what the explanations are, I know what happened. But darkness fell over the land. Why did darkness fall? Because as Jesus hung on the cross, folks, it wasn't about his sin, was it? It was about our sin. It was about the sin of every believer who would ever call on the name of the Lord being gathered to Jesus on that cross. It was a he stood, he hung there on the cross. And he said it was finished because he took all the sins of everyone who had ever believed for all time to the cross with him. What an awesome thing. And the darkness was so great that it blocked out the sun and it caused darkness for three hours. And then it says in Mark 15, 34, it says, Then at three o'clock Jesus called out with a loud voice, he said, Ali, Ali, Lima, Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Now we know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one God. Amen? Amen. Father God didn't abandon Jesus on that cross, but what took place? What took place because of our sins? Remember, Jesus had no sin. He was sinless. He took our sins. Because of the blackness of our sins, the Father, for a moment in time, turned His face from the Son. I don't know how that worked <laughs> in technical terms, but instantly Christ was aware that the Father had turned His face and He was not seen as He did His whole earthly ministry, the face of the Father. And you know, all the things that Jesus went through, that had to be the hardest. Amen. If you think about the crucifixion and everything he suffered, he didn't say a word. When he spoke was when the sins of humanity, of every lost man, woman, and child who would come to the Lord for all ages, were gathered to him and the Father turned his face for that moment in time. Amen. I believe that the horror of the sin that was gathered to Jesus was, was the darkness over the land. Amen. And it says in Mark 15.35, some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. Then one of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes and takes him down. And then Jesus uttered another loud cry, breathed his last, and the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. You know, somebody might have ripped the, the curtain if it was from the bottom to the top. But it was the hand of God the Father. 
to rip that veil in the, in the temple from top to bottom. Amen. And it says, when the Roman officer stood facing him, saw how he had died, he exclaimed, this man truly was the Son of God. The veil in the temple was torn because you know there was no more need for a veil in the Old Testament temple. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 10.19, we read, And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter into heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting Him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. Amen. There's no more need for a veil. Amen. Amen. There was no need to keep sinful man from the presence of God because the only ones that can ever come to the Father, Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. And He is the new and living way. He, His flesh is the new veil. Easter Sunday morning in the empty tomb is not just a story from the past. That's right. It says in Romans 6.6, 6, and I'm putting some scriptures together for you here, because we have to understand Easter Sunday is not just a story about Jesus. It's a story about us, folks, His church. You're going to see that. It says, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. Let that sink in for a minute. We're crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Do you know Christ was not hanging on that cross all by Himself? The Bible says when we're born again, we become new creatures. I'm going to read that scripture in just a second. He took not only our sins, He took our old sinful selves in Himself on that cross on Good Friday. Hallelujah. When Christ died on the cross, it says we were crucified with Him. Isn't that an awesome thing? It means the sin that was in the sinful nature that ruled our lives didn't make it past the cross. We were crucified with Him. It says, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And so let me read Romans 6, 6 again. It says, Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Isn't that an awesome thing? But it's even better than that, folks. Because the story of Jesus didn't end on Good Friday. His story in our lives really began on Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. The day there was an empty tomb and he came out of the tomb. It says in Romans 6, 1 through 4, well, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in his baptism, we joined him in his death? We were we, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism, and as Christ is raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. I love to play with Spike at the end. And he's, he says he wanted to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, well, you'll have to ask Pastor Scott about that. Amen. Anybody that wants to be baptized, we will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you know, baptism is kind of like a play itself. It shows what happens because when they put Christ into the grave, folks, we went, our old selves, went with Him, dead into the ground. Amen? Amen. 
The sins were nailed to the cross. And when Christ came out of the cross on Easter Sunday morning, He was resurrected. He was made anew. And it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, it says, He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We're risen on Easter Sunday with Christ. Don't ask me to explain why it was 2,000 years ago, folks. But every man, woman, and child, by the power of God who created time, went to the cross in Christ. All those that are now on His name, we were buried with Him. That's what baptizing, baptism symbolized, being put in the ground or put under the water. And then we rise up to walk in newness of life. Amen. 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 Give the Lord. We have a new life in Christ because Christ rose from the dead and we rose with Him. And that's an awesome thing. It says in Galatians 2.20, the Apostle Paul said, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ is lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Folks, when Jesus rose up on Easter Sunday morning, it's not just his story, it's our story. Yes. We're alive from the dead. We have been risen, amen, with amen. in Christ and him in us. Every born again believer is alive through the resurrection that happened with Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday morning. Amen. And you know, as Jesus hung on the cross, He could see all time. How many know that God is eternal? Amen. Yeah, He's not on the clock like us. I think i got a minute or two left. No, I'm kidding. Amen. But he, time to God was something that He created. So... It doesn't matter that Jesus shed His blood to wash away sin 2,000 years ago. His blood is still fresh today for anyone that would call upon His name. And it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you're made right with God, and it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. What an awesome message this play the kids put on was for everyone who watched it. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive from the dead. And if we call upon the name of the Lord, we're alive again. I'd like everybody to just bow your heads with me. Maybe you've already asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Maybe you haven't. But if you openly declare Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, the Bible says you'll be saved. For it's by believing in your heart we're made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you're saved. So I just invite everyone to pray after me right now. If you've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is Resurrection Sunday. Why not recommit, redeclare your faith in Jesus? He's alive from the dead. And we are too by faith in Him. Just pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know You died on the cross. You took my sins. You took my old self, my old man, to the cross with You. You died and were buried. And You rose three days later. And I am resurrected in you. Right now, Lord Jesus, I ask forgiveness for all my sins. I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Save me, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Turn and tell your neighbor he's alive. Now tell another neighbor, and I'm alive in him. Amen. 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 Amen.